What's going on, everybody? It is your boy Dylan Matthews back at it again with another hometown take. Today, you see it, you know what I'm talking about. Got the new jersey on, thanks to Simone with the Spizzlers. And the new hat, also thanks to Simone with the Spizzlers. She got me dripped up in the Hawks for Crema this year. So we start the new year all right. Anywho, y'all see it. I'm talking about the Atlanta Hawks today. And I did a video yesterday about some trades could be coming. Well, I'm bringing that to fruition. With a little help from The Athletic and a few sources from them, they said some things on the Twitter today, and I'm building upon that. So I'm giving you a trade rumor of a couple of guys that could be leaving Atlanta for one big dude that can make a huge impact for the Atlanta Hawks, not only offensively, but defensively as well, because you know we need some help in that area. But before I tell you guys exactly what I'm talking about, make sure you guys like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel. Check out the first link in my description box too. Buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel. Help fuel the Atlanta Hawks and some more wins and you know the hope and care and willingness to play defense. So buy me a coffee if you can. Also, check out the second link in my description box too. Subscribe to the Tough Calls Podcast. For me and your girl, someone with does biz works, as she likes to say, are talking to your favorite former and current athletes, hosts, anchors, reporters, head coaches, all that good stuff. So listen to the pod, like the pod, download the pod, subscribe to the pod, share the pod out to your friends so they can listen to the pod, like the pod, download the pod, subscribe to the pod, share the pod out to their friends, friends who also listen to the pod, like the pod, download the pod, subscribe to the pod, and share it out and share the pod out to their friends. I almost got the whole thing without messing up. But you already know what's going on. Share the pod out to your friends. You don't even know about it. Anyways, the Atlanta Hawks could be making some changes. Travis Schlenk did say on the Sports Radio 929 The Game, the flagship station of the Atlanta Hawks yesterday when he was talking to the morning show with John and Hugh. He was talking about, you know, trade deadline. He didn't say that. I'm not quoting him. I did the quotes yesterday. If you want to go check out the video I did yesterday. Anywho, um, he was talking about the trade deadline. You know, could be a very busy time for the Hawks. And he, you know, might need to make some changes. Well, The Athletic came out today on Twitter and said the Hawks are on the lookout for a one for two type of deal for an impact player. Sources tell at Sam Amick. Also in the tweet, they said Danilo Gallinari and Cam Reddish, it seems, are the most likely candidates to be headed out. And, uh, oh, so with Danilo and Cam could be on the trading block, and this is not the first time Cam Reddish's name has been in on some trade talks when it comes to the Atlanta Hawks. It's about the third or fourth time, to be honest. So, Let's do a little trade rumor, shall we? Again, this is just rumor, speculation. There is some validity to it, but we'll get to that later on in the video. Anyways, I'm talking about Danilo Gallinari and Cam Reddish getting traded to who? The Boston Celtics for one Jalen Brown. It fits the mold for the, you know, apparently what the Athletics say the Hawks are looking for, a one for two type of deal. So, one, Jalen Brown for two, Danilo Gallinari and Cam Reddish. It works out. And I'm going to give you a few reasons why this will be a good trade for the Atlanta Hawks. Obviously, Jalen Brown is a dynamic score. Just dropped 50 of 50 burger against the Orlando Magic. But he's been pretty good all year. 24.3 points per game, 6.1 rebounds, 2.7 assists, 1.2 steals, but in the last seven games, he really been balling. He ain't playing with y'all in 2022. Last seven games, he's been averaging 31.3 points per game, 7.9 rebounds, three assists, and 1.1 steals. Now, I do believe Jason Tatum has been out. I'm not sure for how long he's been out, um, but I do know he has missed some time um, just these past couple of games for the Boston Celtics. So, like I said, the Jalen Brown trade would fit the two-for-one mold. Danilo Gallinari, Cam Reddish for one, Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown, like, like I just laid out, he's good offensively, but he is also pretty solid defensively as well. Now, he does have some things to work on, and I'll talk about it here. He does have a 108.5 defensive rating this season, according to StatMuse, and he's a very good on-ball defender. You know, if you watch Jalen Brown at all, he's very good on-ball. But 
he does need to pay attention more off ball because he be getting lost sometimes and he be losing his defender when it comes to off ball. So, you know, he's viable to get cut on and lose his dude on, you know, backdoor pass or something like that. So one thing that Jalen Brown does need to work on is his off ball defense. But I will hope, I mean, and before I say this, I will, you know, preface it by saying Ben Millen is supposed to be a defensive-minded head coach, but the Atlanta Hawks' main struggle this season has been defense. So there you go. I will also say, though, that it might be due to some players not caring on defense. And, I mean, Travis Lincoln said that, Nick Millen has said that. So, you know, players got to play at the end of the day, and they don't care about playing defense. You can't necessarily make them. Jalen Brown, though, does seem like he cares about playing defense, and he seems like he wants to play defense. Just one aspect of his defensive game needs to get better when that uh, is the uh, playing off ball. So, hopefully Nate Millen could, you know, help him out in that area. I'm like, okay, you know, you're a good on-ball defender, but let's get your off ball right. So, hopefully that's something he could develop in Atlanta if he did come to the Hawks. Now, you guys are probably thinking like, but why would the Boston Celtics trade Jalen Brown? They got Tatum and Brown and, you know, they're supposed to work out. And I understand that and I get all of that. But, how long is, you know, new VP or GM, I forget his exact role, Brad Stevens, former coach of the Boston Celtics, but now he done moved in the front office. How long is he going to let this Tatum and Brown experiment go on? And I say that because Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown only average 43.1 points per game when they both play. So how long is that going to go? Because 43.1 points per game between your best two players and your two primary scorers that's not, I don't know if that's gonna cut it. I don't know if that's gonna cut it, to be honest. So, how long is there, how long are they gonna let that experiment go on for? How long is it gonna be before they're like, okay, and obviously they would keep, I would like to think, they would keep Jason Tatum over Jalen Brown. So, if, you know, if they're thinking, hey, this might not work out between Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, how long are they gonna let it linger on before they make a move? Why not make a move this NBA trade deadline and send them to the Atlanta Hawks? In exchange for you can get Danilo Gallinari. He brings you a little scoring off the bench. You know, you guys know you guys ain't want help from bench scoring wise. You know, your bench ain't that strong. You guys ain't that deep. You know what I'm saying? And you get a young player in Cam Reddish who could turn into a nice two-way player. And he can shoot the three. You know, he can space the floor. Be a nice little three and deep D for you guys. You know, you know, he actually no, Cam Reddish has been one of the players that has sparked us a little bit on defense, so he can be that way for y'all. And I know Hawks fans already know what y'all saying in the comments right now. No, can't trade Cam Reddish, can't trade Cam Reddish, can't trade Cam Reddish. Well, you know what? I used to be on the you can't trade Cam Reddish for by any means necessary train to. But you know what? I got my I got off my stop. Once we're at 16 to 20, y'all, something gonna have to shake. Something gonna have to give. And Let's just be completely real with ourselves for a second. Does Cam Reddish have the potential to be like a Paul George? And could he be that, you know, that Robin to Trey Young's Batman? Of course he can. Of course he has that potential. We've seen the flashes. I know. I get it. Cam Reddish is a cold dude. I know. I understand. He's shown flashes. I know. I understand. But Jalen Brown could be that dude too. And he already is that dude. He already is that dude. I mean, isn't this Atlanta Hawks team ready to win now? I mean, if we start playing defense, aren't we ready to compete now? Think about that. I mean, yes, the Nets went through what they went through last year, and we didn't have to play the Nets last year. But, I mean, we went six games with the Milwaukee Bucks last year. We were two games away from the NBA Finals last year. And I know it was a crazy year again, but this Atlanta Hawks team has shown it's ready to win now if we can get our defense straight. And if we're ready to win now, I'm sorry, Cam Reddish isn't a win now type of piece. Jalen Brown is. Jalen Brown can help us win now. Jalen Brown is ready to be the, I wouldn't even call him a Robin. He's a 1B to Trey Young being 1A. Jalen Brown is a baller. And he's good defensively. He would be the on-ball help, on-ball defense help we need in the backcourt. Like I said, hopefully Nate Miller could get his off-ball defense right. But, I mean, it works. It fits. I would love to have a starting lineup. Now, this is where it does get a little dicey. A starting lineup 
of Trey Young, Jalen Brown, DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, and Clint Capella? My goodness, who wouldn't want that as a starting lineup? And then off the bench, hopefully Bogey will be okay with this, and we might have to find a place to ship Bogey too. But if Bogey would be okay with coming off the bench, uh, a, a, a second five of DeLon Wright, Bogey Bogdanovich, Kevin Herter. Um, I don't know who the backup power four would be anymore because we lost to Milo. But Onyeko Kongo would be in that mix. Maybe maybe we even go big with Gorgie Dang and Onyeko Kongo. Maybe we'll let Onyeko play some of the four. I don't know. But we figured that out. But the point is, we would keep our depth because we got plenty of wings. You know, we can, we can afford to lose a wing in Cam Reddish. And with Onyeko Kongu coming back, we can afford to lose him. Oh, we can afford to lose Danilo Gallinari because we got Onyeka back. We still got, um, we still got uh, Gorgie Dang. So it works, guys. It works. And if we're trying to win now, if we're trying to, you know, go forward, move forward, and not regress, this is a move we might want to really think about making. And I know Cam Reddish will be tough to lose. But think about this too. Could we really keep both DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish? Think about what we've done already financially. We've already signed Trey Young. We've already signed John Collins. Signed Clint Capella to an extension. We've already signed Kevin Herter. That's four dudes we gave pretty nice money to. Are we really going to be able to give money to both DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish? And while, yes, Cam Reddish might be the better might end up being the better overall player. DeAndre Hunter has been way better on defense and he's been way more of a consistent pro when he's healthy. Now I know, yes, the health is a concern for DeAndre Hunter. I understand that. I totally get that. And I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just saying I wouldn't be mad at it. I wouldn't be mad at it. Because if we can find a way to keep DeAndre Hunter healthy and we have Jalen Brown too, that's two very, very good defensive wings. Clint Capella, our anchor in the post defensively. I mean, what more do you want? Now Trey can, you know, just guard whoever the least liable person is on the opposing team to go off. DeAndre Hunter and Jalen Brown can guard the two best players on that team. Clint Capella anchoring us down low. Blocking shots, cleaning up the mess, and hopefully he won't have to clean up as much mess if we do have DeAndre Hunter, Jalen Brown. I mean, guys, I'm talking myself into it even more as I keep going. This will work. It will work. Let me see if I have any more stats for y'all. I think that's it. Oh, I actually do have one more stat for y'all. The lineup with Jalen Brown in it for the Celtics right now only gives up 87.6 points per 100 possessions. That's in the 96th percentile among lineups league-wide in the NBA. That's very good. Jalen Brown helps. He helps out defenses. He helps out the Boston Celtics defense a lot. While he was out, the Boston Celtics were giving up like 110 points per 100 possessions. So, almost. Don't shoot the messenger, guys. I'm just putting it out there. I can't make the final call. That's on Travis Link and them. But, I, but I'm saying I would like it. I would like it. Trey Young, Jalen Brown, DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, Clint Capella. <laughs> One, you couldn't stop us on offense, and we might be able to put the clamps on you on defense, too, if we really mess around and get serious with defense. And then, like I said, DeLon Wright, who's been very good once he's got used to our system. Good defender as well. Kevin Herter has a chance. You know, Kevin Herter is a solid defender. Bogey Bogdanovich, you know, he would be our primary scoring option in that second unit. Onyeka Kongu, great energy, great hustle, good defensively in the post two. And Gorgie Dang, you know, can do what he does. He can shoot threes every now and again and get rebounds. So there you go. I'm just putting it out there, guys. I like it. I like it. And also, something new we're going to start in 2022 because, you know, we're trying to make the content better for you guys. The hometown take is trying to make the content better for you guys. I'm not just going to spitball these trade rumors anymore. I'm going to see if they will actually work. So, on the screen now, bada -bada -ding, you're going to see 
that in ESPN's NBA trade machine, Danilo Gallinari and Cam Reddish for Jalen Brown will actually work in a real trade. You see on the screen now that Danilo Gallinari has two years, almost 20 and a half million left on his deal for the Hawks. Cam Reddish has two years, four million, almost five million, a little over four and a half million left on his uh, deal. So the Boston Celtics would be acquiring two players for just over $25 million. And we would be just getting Jalen Brown for $26 million because he has three years, uh, 26, is that $26 million per year? I know, I think that's just three years, $26 million left on his deal. So we would be getting 20, we'd be taking in 26, close to $27 million. The Boston Celtics will be getting um, 20, a little over $25 million. And you see, the trade is successful. So I ain't just saying that we should do it and it's a pipe dream. It works out money-wise. This is something that could legit happen. If Travis Schlank calls up the phone to Brad Stevens, it could be Danilo Gallinari and Karen Reddish for Jalen Brown. It works. And I like it. Matter of fact, I love it. I would be okay. I would be totally fine with this trade. Because again, already paid Trey Young. Already paid John Collins. Already paid Kevin Herter. Already paid Clint Capella. How many more people can we pay? Just to be quite honest. Cam Reddish and DeAndre Hunter up next. Can we pay them both? I don't know. I don't know if we'll be able to pay, keep them both anyway. So go ahead. If we can't keep them both, get something back for one of them. And Jalen Brown. Back for Cam Reddish and Danilo Gallinari, who I forgot to mention, by the way, is completely useless if he's not making shots. I don't think anybody on this channel will have a problem with us trading away Danilo Gallinari. I don't think so. But to get something like to get a, a, a player of Jalen Brown's caliber back for Danilo Gallinari and Cam Reddish, it's hard to say no, guys. I'm just saying. I know y'all will, but go ahead and let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. I really, really like the idea of this trade, guys. I really do. It's, like I said, it's Trey Young 1A, Jalen Brown 1B. He shores up the defense on the perimeter. He's going to help out Clint Capella down low defensively. Clint Capella won't have to clean up his much mess. And Jalen Brown been balling. Like I said, his last seven games. 31.3 points per game, 7.9 rebounds, 3 assists, 1.1 steals. This season averaging 24.3 points per game, 6.1 rebounds, 2.7 assists, 1.2 steals. And Jalen Brown is young, too. He's in the prime of his career. I mean, I don't know what more else to say or how to convince y'all, but I think it will work. Point blank, period. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel, turn your notification bells on because this isn't the only trade room I'm about to hit y'all with. I think Mark is smart. You know, one of Jalen Brown's teammates right now would be a good fit for the Atlanta Hawks as well. I also think one Jeremy Grant would be a good fit for the Atlanta Hawks as well. Another wing player, a uh, wing who can score and plays very good defense. So stay tuned. We got some more trade rumors coming on the hometown tech. You feel me? But again, like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel. Check out the first link in my description box too. Buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel, help fuel the Atlanta Hawks to some more wins and maybe a big old trade deadline trade. We're going to see. Also, check out the second link in my description box too. Subscribe to the Tough Cause podcast. Me and your girl Simone with this bizzler. We're talking to your favorite former and current athletes, hosts, anchors, reporters, all that good stuff. Listen to the pod, like the pod, download the pod, subscribe to the pod, share it out to your friends so they can do all the same things. All right, guys, like I said, think about it. Cam Reddish, Danilo Gallinari for Jalen Brown works out money-wise. Could work out lineup-wise. It does work out lineup-wise. And it's not just a piece for now. Jalen Brown's a piece for the future, too. We can build with him. Think about it. Think about it. All right, y'all. Till I talk to you guys next time, stay true to Atlanta. Believe in Atlanta. Go Hawks. Peace.